Okay, next we're going to turn to how to fit multiple variable linear models. And the key idea here is called the least squares solution. So let's look at the problem that we want to do for model fitting. The linear model has a number of parameters described by a vector beta with k plus one coefficients. Now, if we have training data, xi and yi, and I pick a parameter beta, the predicted value for the i sample will be our y hat i, which is thus the linear combination of the features with that parameter. The key idea in fitting a linear, um, a multiple, multiple variable linear model is to define something called the residual sum of squares. What it is, is just if I pick a beta, I look at every sample and they look at the squared difference between the measured value yi and the predicted value y hat i all squared. Note that this function is implicitly a function of beta because the y hat i's are functions of beta. This is sometimes called the squared residuals or the sum of squared errors. The key idea then, once we have this function, is called the least square solution, which is simply to find the beta to minimize this residual sum of squares. That is, we want to find the beta that makes the y hat i's, the predicted values, as close as possible to the measured values, at least in the squared sum case. Now, before I go on, there are a lot of other terms or variants of the residual sum of squares the terminology is not exactly standard, so I'll just describe what I'll use in this course. But this first is the residual sum of squares that we just saw, which is just the sum of the squared differences between the true values and the predicted values. You'll also sometimes see the residual sum of squares normalized by the sample, or sometimes called the mean squared error, which is just the residual sum of squares divided by n. So it's kind of the average squared difference over the training data set. We might also think about something called the normalized RSS, which is just the mean squared error divided by the standard deviation. I'll give you an interpretation of this particular quantity at the end of this section. All right, before we go on, there's a general pattern that we see in fitting these models that applies to typical machine learning problems. In each machine learning problem, you pick a model with some parameters. So for example, in multiple linear regression, that model is to say the predicted value is a linear combination of the features, and the parameters are the coefficients in that linear combination. You then get data which in our case are the n samples, xi and yi. And then you pick a loss function, which is to some measure of how well this model fits the data. And this will be implicitly a function of these parameters. For the least square solution, that's just the residual sum of squares is just our loss function. And finally, you pick, find the parameters that minimize the loss. So in our case, we pick the betas to minimize this residual sum of squares. These four steps will occur for all the basic supervised machine learning problems that we'll have. We pick a model, we get data, we pick a loss function, and then we'll minimize it. One more little mathematical thing that I just want to point out in terms of notation. The residual sum of squares, as we've shown here, is just a sum of the squared differences between yi and y hat i. It's sometimes useful to write this in vector form. So to do this, remember that if you have a vector with, say, r components, we can define its norm, or Euclidean norm, as the sum of the squared values components to the one half. If the x was a two-dimensional vector, this norm would just be the distance of that vector in typical geometry, sometimes called the Euclidean norm or the L2 norm, 
the L standing for the mathematician Lebesgue. Once we have this notation, the residual sum of squares is just found by taking the vector of target values and subtracting the vector of predicted values and looking at the norm squared of this. Okay, um, now let's look at how what is the solution to our least squares problem. Remember that the residual sum of squares, here again, just the sum of the square differences, and the predicted values y hat i are simply the sum over the feature matrix multiplied by the betas. Remember the feature matrix has either ones on the first row or the x's on the subsequent, sorry, ones on the first column and x's on the subsequent column. So we have our a is known, we have our y, and we need to find beta. This vector that minimizes this, again, is called the least square solution because it's the least value of this squared difference. Turns out that this least square solution has a simple form. The one that minimizes it, which I'll call beta hat, is just given by this algebraic expression here. Just to note, these are matrix quantities. A transpose Y is a p-dimensional vector, and A transpose A will be a p by p matrix. So this is a matrix inverse, a p by p matrix inverse, and this is a p-dimensional vector. And then when you multiply these by, through, you get a p-dimensional output. This means that you can compute the best coefficient analytically. Now, usually this is too hard to do on, by hand, but you could easily do this for fairly large p on any computer program. Basically, you just have to solve a linear set of equations, and I'll talk about this um, in the next section. Now, we're going to prove this um, below in the next, if you're watching the videos, this will be subsequent videos, but let me just go, um, before we do that, a couple more points. Okay, one uh, thing that I want to talk about is how we measure how well this multiple variable linear model fits data. And one of the most useful um, metrics for that is called the R squared value. It's given, it's something that's called the coefficient of determination, and it's given by this formula here, where SY squared is just simply the sample variance, and the MSE is what we've been Calling, talking about all the, this entire section, which is the RSS per sample. Now, this quantity has a simple interpretation. First, let's look at this fraction here. This fraction you can think of as the numerator is the error with the linear predictor, because it's the difference between the sample's true value and the predicted value. The denominator, which is the standard, um, the sample variance, is just the variance or the error assuming you're predicting with just the mean value. So it's kind of the relative error of the mean squared error to the variance of the data. Given this, you can think of the R squared value by, from looking at this expression here. It's the reduction of the variance in using the linear model relative to the original variance. So sometimes you'll see, for example, if the R squared value is, say, 0.6, you'll say 60% of the variance of the data can be explained by the predictors. Now, on the training data, you can just show some simple mathematical properties. That one, that the R squared value is always between 0 and 1. And when it's 1, that means this value is close to 0, which means the mean squared error or the relative mean squared error is small, and that means the predictor is a linear model provides a good fit. On the other hand, when R squared is close to zero, that means this quantity is close to one, which means that the error in the model is high, or that the linear predictor did not offer much more than just not ignoring the variables entirely. Now, um, before you go on any further, you can try the in-class exercise. This is just another, again, super simple example where you calculate the um, parameters for a very uh, simple data set with four samples and two features.